Hey, what's up, G League fans? Hope everybody is doing good, staying healthy, staying safe out there, following all protocols so that we can get back to some basketball action. Today, we are going to be joined by Josh Majette, who is currently a point guard for the Lakeland Magic. He has played in the NBA. He has played in the G League. He has played overseas. He has done it all professionally. So we will be joined by him for a little Q&A like we did with Justin Anderson. And then we'll break down some of his highlights from the season, get some insight from him, how he makes some of the plays he does, and how he's become the floor general that he's become. So without further ado, we are going to try and connect in Josh in one second. All right, we have the request and we're going to let's let that connect. And then when he gets through, we're going to start with the Q&A and then we'll go to highlights. Don't forget in the comment section to drop your questions for Josh Majette. And speaking of which, looks like we're here with Josh. Josh, how you doing, man? How you hanging? What have you been up to? I'm good. Um, you know, kind of like everybody else, just finding stuff to pass the days when this uh, in this unprecedented time. Um, you know, just finding new stuff to do every day. Have you picked up any new any new non basketball skills? Have you picked up anything uh, during this hoop hiatus? Yeah, uh, my wife's trying to teach me to cook a little bit, uh, be a little more more productive around the house. Uh, got some house projects going on, uh, installing a closet. Um, so just different stuff I wouldn't be able to do if I was still in season, obviously. So I'm just trying to find new things to learn and still grow. Not nah, definitely, definitely good to become well-rounded like you are on the court. Definitely want to be so <laughs> off the court as well. But all right, let's just jump into it. So sort of just starting from the start of your career, what a lot of people might not know is that you actually played Division II basketball before making it to the G League, the NBA overseas. So it's an extremely unique path to take that route and get to the highest level that you have gotten to. Can you sort of talk through when you decided that you were going to go to Alabama Huntsville, what your D2 experience was like and what making that jump to the next level was like? Yeah. So for me, I had, uh, as a senior in high school, I had zero division one offers um, and then one division two offers. So the, the decision was pretty easy for me. Um, you know, it was either, stop playing basketball or come play at Alabama Huntsville. Um, and it was the best decision I ever made, obviously. Um, you know, it changed my life forever. I got to play on some really great teams at UAH, uh, play for a great coach, Lindy A. Cuff. Um, and then, you know, I had some good years at UAH, but then I had a really, really good senior year. And that was kind of when, you know, the idea and like the, just the possibility of playing professional basketball kind of struck me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I had the opportunity to, to keep playing after, after my college career ended. And, you know, it was pretty much a no brainer to, to get paid, to keep playing basketball. And uh, I ended up going overseas to uh, the Netherlands my first year. Um, mm -hmm. And I came back, was in the G League draft uh, my second year as a professional in 2013. Um, went overseas in, um, to Greece my third year. Uh, mm -hmm. Came back, played in LA uh, my my fourth and fifth year professionally. And then I finally got the two-way with Atlanta and then overseas last year. And then I was back in the G League uh, on the two-way with Orlando this year. So when you signed that two-way contract with the Hawks, you were actually the first two-way player signed in Atlanta Hawks franchise history. And you know, as a guy who spent three seasons in the G League and playing overseas before even playing in, or seeing an NBA court and playing in the NBA, what kind of mindset did you have to keep to keep yourself on the grinds and, and sort of know that you are good enough because, hey, you ended up making it? Yeah, no, I think the word you used was right. It was a grind. You know, there's um, a lot of nights where you spend, uh, sit up and you're just thinking, you know, is this really what I want to do? Do I want to keep, you know, grinding it out in the G League? And, um, but in the back of my head, I knew that I was still – I hadn't reached my peak yet. I was still getting better, and I was still progressing as a player. So the, mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I was regressing at all. And I felt like if I could just keep getting better every year and keep, you know, keep making the right play and keep doing the right things on the court, then my time would come. Um, and, and it eventually did. You know, there's – it's a hard line to to ride kind of do you do you jump overseas and you do you take mm -hmm. the money or do you hold out for your you know lifelong dream to hopefully become an NBA player and you know you, you sort of mentioned there that it's all about finding where you want to be and, and sticking with the grind as you sort of followed up and mentioned about that so as someone who's been through the grind of the G League your first season, as you mentioned, you were drafted, started out in L.A. when they were still the defenders before they become, became the South Bay Lakers. You play, you're playing in the G League this season. What kind of progression have you seen from the league and the players in the league from your first season starting out to where we are now in the 2019-20 season? 
Man, it's night and day. Uh, every year, the G League and the NBA have done such a good job of putting more resources into the G League and, and taking it more seriously. And more and more and more, you see like, you know, guys spending more time in the G League, and they, it's a real place for you know draft picks or or younger players to develop and mm -hmm. grow their game. Um, you know, I think my first year in the G League, there was 18 teams, and now there's you know 28, almost a one to one uh, with every big club and. And I think the synergy between big club and, you know, their G League team is, mm -hmm. is getting better every year. There's more of a – we're running the same plays. And when I was first in the league, it was just kind of, you know, every team – it's not always the same. And it's always yeah. kind of like changes team to team. But um, mm -hmm. now you're seeing like that real connection between the big club and their G League team. So you've been a two-way player for two different teams in the Atlanta Hawks organization and the Orlando Magic organization. Obviously, as a two-way player, you're going back and forth. You're – practicing with the NBA team, practicing with the G League team, playing with the NBA team, playing with the G League team. I mean, guys, as you've seen, you can play in a G League game and an NBA game in the mm -hmm. same day, which is a lot of hoops and probably an awesome experience. But sort of the, the process of what you have to go through going back and forth, how do you keep your mind right for that? And how do you sort of just keep going knowing that you're going to be playing for two different teams, even though, as you mentioned, it is the same system trying to run the same plays? Well, what is that mindset like going back and forth from two teams? Yeah, it's, it, it can be tough, you know, just, you know, what kind of role are you going to have for one team compared to the role for a different team. But just a matter of staying sharp and staying on top of your skill set and reminding yourself what you can do and why they brought you in. And the re there's a reason you're, you know, in the position mm -hmm. you are is because you can play. And um, it's just a matter of, you know, having mentally knowing, all right, this is what I want to do going into a certain game, whether mm -hmm. it's with the big club or, or down with the G League. 100%. And I saw a question in the comments just first of all, asking what a uh, two-way contract is. For people who don't know, on a two-way contract is a player who can be signed with less three years or less service in the NBA. They can spend 45 days with their NBA team and the rest of the time is spent with the G League team. So just for people sort of wondering what is a two-way contract that started in the 2017-18 season, sort of like I mentioned, Josh was the Atlanta Hawks first two-way player ever. So for the people wondering what that is, that is what a two-way contract is. So recently you got to play with USA basketball in FIBA America Cup qualifying, got to go down to Puerto Rico, play there, come down to Washington DC, or for you up from Lakeland to Washington DC to play against Puerto Rico. You know, I assume it's an incredible experience. Anytime you get to rep team USA, put on that USA basketball Jersey. Can you sort of talk about what that experience was like and the guys you got to play with? Yeah, of course. It was awesome. Um, you know, that's like the word that really sticks out. Every time I get asked about it, that's the word I use. It was just, it was so special to put, you know, our country's letters on my chest. And especially the first game going down to Puerto Rico, you know, it's a sold out arena of 10,000 fans, um, mm -hmm. you know, all screaming Puerto Ricans. Um, but it was, it was special because, you know, before the game, they obviously play our national anthem to have, and to hear the national anthem with wearing USA on your chest is uh it's a moment I'll never forget. And, you know, to be able to to play with other guys who are in the same situation as me, you know, who are guys who obviously we think we belong in the NBA and that's why we're doing mm -hmm. what we do. Um, and, you know, we had kind of had that chip on our shoulder and that's what we brought into, into both games. And uh, we were able to be successful and win both games and, you know, do our job. And like you mentioned, you guys had two successful games there, able to get the wins for both of those. Now, sort of going back to the NBA as a guy, you, you played in the NBA in two different seasons. What are some of your favorite NBA memories from playing up there and maybe some of the favorite guys that you've guarded in the league? Yeah, um, well, obviously, the, the, what comes out is my first NBA bucket um, mm -hmm. opening night, uh, my year with Atlanta. Um, you know, Coach Bud was our coach. Uh, he came up to me the day before and was like, you know, I know you have ne you've never played an NBA game, so if you want to tell your fiancé and your parents and your family to, to fly out to Dallas, you're going to play. That's so awesome. I, I, was, I was just – I was really, really excited just to dress out. Um, and then, you know, I shoot around that morning. One of the assistants comes up to me and he says, I think Coach Bud's going to throw you in there tonight, so be ready. So – you know, I was I was really really excited. Twenty seven years old, never played an NBA game. Um, then I get thrown in there, you know, halfway through the second quarter, uh, and was able to make a three. Um, you know, it's it's a moment that I'll you know I can still see the play in my head right now. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as players go, um, this past season getting a guard and match up with Ricky Rubio, you know, a guy I've looked up to and I love watching mm -hmm. play. Uh, you know, both 
I kind of like to say I play like him, you know, a pass first point guard. Um, and to get up to match up with him after, you know, watching him for so many years was, was pretty special. So now w when you were getting into basketball to start and you were deciding that this was going to potentially be a career, something you wanted to do with your life, who are some of the players that you looked up to and some of the players you aspired to play like? Yeah, no, I loved, um, you know, growing up in middle school and high school, I loved Rajon Rondo uh, during his Celtic days. Um, obviously, Steve Nash was, you know, like a, an idol to me. Uh, mm -hmm. He still is um, somebody I really look up to. I'd say those two are kind of, you know, who I can kind of like see myself playing similar as. Obviously, those guys are awesome and really, really good players. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, I love watching them and, you know, just enjoy trying to model my game like them. I wouldn't downgrade your game too much, man. You are second all-time in assists in the G League. You have had quite the storied career, have done such a great job with that. Now, sort of for playing in the G League so long and getting to the NBA, what helped prepare you the most playing in the G League for when you finally got up to the NBA and it was go time in the association? Yeah, it's just, you know, people don't realize how good the talent is in the G League. You know, they just hear, oh, he's just a G Leaguer. Oh, he just, mm -hmm. he's... He's putting up those numbers because he's in the G League. But there are some really, really, really good players in the G League. So every night, if you don't show up ready to play, you're going to get your butt whooped and you're going to, you know, get embarrassed. Um, so just, you know, there's so many especially good point guards in the G League. Um, so just night in, night out. And then as the season winds down and it's like the last, you know, 15 games and teams are really – you've already played teams two and three times and teams are really <laughs> scouting you and – they know what your strengths are and they're trying to take that stuff away. Um, that's how I think you can like really grow as a player and, you know, do things that you're not normally used to doing. So I see some questions in there uh, sort of about playing with Los Angeles, playing with the defenders and all of that. You had the chance to play with Andre Ingram, correct? When you were I with did. the defenders. What was that like since today was the two year anniversary actually of when he made his NBA debut playing against the Rockets 19 points, four three-pointers. We'll have some highlights for you guys on that later on our G League social channels. But sort of playing with a guy who has really committed to the G League, has played so long and got that opportunity and really made the most of it. What was playing with Andre like and what were maybe some things you got from playing with him? Man, Andre was the ultimate teammate. Somebody, you know, I, I still talk to Andre, you know, probably once or twice a month to this day. Um, mm -hmm. He's the ultimate, keeps, you know, is a – great locker room guy keeps things positive at all times he he brings his professionalism every single day whether it's a 30 minute walkthrough or it's you know first round of the nba or the of the g league playoffs um, mm -hmm. he's just a great uh professional um somebody i learned a lot from and you know that i know like the cliche it couldn't happen to a nicer guy but like he was he literally he deserved everything that that came his way when those in that uh in that game two years ago and it was awesome seeing him get his opportunity, obviously. So sort of bridging off of that question, I'm sure he was one of your favorite teammates you played with. But at the NBA and G League level, who are some of your favorite teammates that you've gotten to play with? Oh, man. Uh, I've had a, a lot of good ones. Uh, my L.A. days, uh, Ryan Gomes comes to mind, Vander Blue, Justin Harper. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let's see here. Uh, Speedy Smith was a, was a great teammate of mine, someone I love playing with. Um, then moving on to my Atlanta Erie days, uh, love playing with Jalen Morris. Um, Jeremy Evans was another like all time great teammate. Um, you know, he's a, he was a six year NBA vet and came in with the most humble attitude every day. Um, he was awesome. Uh, and then this past year, you know, we had, we had a great team and I, I loved every single one of those guys, but like guys like Emil Jefferson, who just like showed up every day, ready to work, mm -hmm. you know, and guys just they put their egos aside and we're just trying to get better every day. It's definitely going to be a good amount of Emil Jefferson when we uh, go and watch your highlights. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be seeing some of that. We will get to that shortly. Just uh, sort of answering some questions down in the comments. If you have any questions for Josh, feel free to go down and drop those. What have you been watching during this quarantine? What, Thanks, uh, JP. I see, I see JP McCarra down there throwing in a little comment, but what have you been watching during the quarantine? Any TVs or movie recommendations you want to Ooh. give to people? Uh, we just finished a uh, new season of Ozark. Fantastic. Very um, good. Yeah, I've been watching Dave on FX. That's uh, been a good first season. Um, trying to think. We watched The Boys on, mm -hmm. uh, on Amazon Prime. Very good. Um, then last night we watched The Scheme on HBO. That was the... Uh, the NCAA documentary that was uh, uh, pretty interesting. Um, very. 
Yeah, no, we haven't. Um, that's about. That's probably the highlights of our of our TV watching. We actually just got a great question in the comments. Someone wanted to know sort of what your responsibility and role is as the point guard on the floor and your responsibility of calling plays and directing the offense. How, how do you take that into your own when you're on the court? Yeah, uh, early in the game, I try to, you know, really get guys going and, you know, get other shots and, you know, just get everyone into a, into a comfort level that, you know, they can feel good, you know, the, the rest of the game, the last three quarters. Um, and then depending on, you know, what our coach wants and what we're trying to attack defensively, um, mm -hmm. that kind of goes into play calls. And then, you know, the third, fourth quarters is when I would, you know, usually try to score a little bit more or take what the defense has given us and just try to be a little bit more aggressive when it, you know, comes down to, to winning time. And then uh, another good question we got in there from another fan. If you weren't playing basketball, what would you want to pursue and what do you think you'd be doing with your career? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I majored in finance at, at UAH, uh, mm -hmm. so that's always been – I've always loved math. Um, that's always been a, an interest of mine, but I, just, I don't know if I could, you know, fully be away from the game of basketball. So coaching is always kind of, you know, in the back of my mind as, uh, as something I would think about doing. We, we've seen point guards make the transition. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're basically the second coach on the court, so, uh, so that would definitely make sense. All right, Josh, one last question from the fans, then we're going to jump to some highlights. Somebody wanted to know, is there any reason behind your jersey number or the number you wear, or is that just something you sort of picked? Yeah, no. Um, I've kind of moved around just because my number gets taken everywhere I go. Uh, I was four in high school, and that was my number, you know, middle school, high school coming up. Um, and then someone had it uh, at UAH when I got here, so I, I just cut it in half, and I was two in college. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and then my first year with the Defenders uh, – they had like one medium jersey, and I was the smallest guy on the team, so uh, I took number nine. Um, so you get to wear number nine. Yeah, and that's kind of been my professional jersey all the way through. And then uh, this year I went back to, to four with uh, Orlando. Definitely. And actually one last question because I saw another good question. For, for players who might be rookies who are starting out in the G League, guys who are working through it, what is the best advice you can give to someone in the G League trying to make it to the NBA? Um, I would say make every day count, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a game day and you're in the rotation and you're playing 35 minutes or it's a game or it's, you know, middle of the week and no game and y'all are just coming in to get some work in, you know, treat every day, enjoy every day and, and treat that as an opportunity to, to get a little bit better. And then by the end of the season, you, you won't even recognize who you were at the beginning of the year. Um, you know, mm -hmm. there's so many resources we have whether it's coaches or other teammates to to try and get better it's uh it's nice to take advantage of it definitely and, and sort of like you mentioned everyday counts justin anderson made the same point uh call-ups don't necessarily have to come right at the start of the season you see them come at all points throughout the season guys who have been successful getting a call up first week of the season uh, second to last week of the season there there's sort of opportunities for guys all over the g league we i mean we've seen the stat which kind of blows my mind is that I think it's just under 50% of players in the NBA have NBA G League experience, which, as you mentioned, you first played in the league in 2013-14 season. We have seen the league come a long way since then. So, Josh, we really appreciate you doing the Q&A. Are you, uh, you ready to watch some highlights? Absolutely. All right, let's do it. We're going to flip the camera around here. We're going to start out with some assist highlights. So we're sort of going to take a look at how you use your role as a floor general out there, dropping dimes, and then we're going to get some buckets. Sound good to you? Sounds great. All right, let's get it started. So this first highlight is going to come from G League Showcase. You're a guy who's played in a couple of G League Showcases. What is that event like to you, and what does it mean to players playing there? Uh, it's special because, you know, um, every – executive is there watching um so it, you yeah, kind of had to ride that fine line of not trying to do too much and still playing your game while also trying to to showcase what you can do and you know our, our team just talked about winning games showing and making winning plays shows up more to those executives than anything else so we see a couple alley-oops starting out early a couple nice dishes inside how do you find the mix between maybe being a little flashy and trying to make the best play possible? Because hmm. you've got well, some nice dimes on there. Yeah, well, we were really, really fortunate this year. Our big guys were, were great screeners, first of all, and then they were really athletic. So you can kind of get away with, you know, making a little more flashy pass and maybe not as accurate, uh, but they'll still go and get it at the rim. So we were really, really uh, lucky to have those guys. We're going to see, and we've seen a couple of steals leading to transition opportunities. 
how much faster and how much pace have you seen the league generate and sort of in terms of playing style, how much faster have you seen it become since you're starting the league? Man, it's, it's a lot, lot faster. Um, you know, I think it's what, you know, the NBA was kind of a few years behind how the G league was playing as far as pace was going. Um, you know, our, our scores were in the the one twenties and the one thirties, my first few years in the G league. And now, you know, you look every night and that's what NBA scores are looking like. Seen a couple of good dunks in here. Who is some of your favorite guys you've had to throw lobs to? Some of your favorite guys finishing off the oof in the alley oop. Um, this year, Mike Kaiser and uh, Isaiah Armwood were my, were my two favorite. You can kind of get a little uh, creative with those guys. And uh, it's good to see y'all got a meal's only dunk of the year on there. So that was happy <laughs> for him there. A little stare at the camera. <laughs> So how much – so obviously in terms of being a point guard, you, you have to freelance a little bit out there. Sometimes you have to get a little bit out of the exact set when you're out there. How much do you like doing that and taking it into your own hands and, and sort of generating the offense from when you have the ball? Uh, yeah, to be honest, that's one of my favorite things to do. Um, our coach this year, Stan Heath, gave me a ton of freedom, um, whether it was not calling plays and just kind of freelancing and, you know, letting our, our flow offense kind of, kind of work or – it was something I saw and I wanted to make a play call. He kind of gave me all the freedom to, to do what, what I thought was best for our team. And um, I'm really thankful for that. So we're going to get to a couple of three pointers here and then we'll get to the rest of your buckets. You know, you sort of mentioned in the G league sort of being a little bit ahead of the NBA in terms of pace. Uh, did you notice that same thing happened with the three point revolution that we sort of seen in the NBA or have you seen it somewhat consistent with what we've seen in the, uh, the association? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you look at box scores every night and it's like in the G League, we're shooting 40, 50 threes a game. And now and that, that was four or five years ago. And now it's it's translating over to um, to the NBA. And it's it's come at the point where, you know, you can't really function as an or you can function as an NBA player, but you're much more effective if if you have that three point shot. It's it's such a weapon that it just spreads the floor and makes people guard you from, you know, 30 feet out defensively we saw a good question on there we've seen a, a couple more steals leading to baskets what is your mentality as a defender and what would your advice be to someone who wants to become a lockup defender as a point guard um I think it starts you know before the game ever happens scouting report knowing what guys want to do um knowing your team's coverages and knowing your pick and roll coverage and what your responsibility is every play um so I think it starts there and then you just got to have that mentality every every possession that, you know, it's just, it's got to mean something to you if your guy is going to score on you. Um, it's got to mean that you're, mm -hmm. you no. know, you got to take pride in it and you got to be willing to put in the work. We've seen a couple of spin moves here, a couple of step backs there. What are some of your favorite go-to moves to go to on the court when you're trying to get a basket? Yeah, no, I, I, I hunted the step back a lot this year. Um, you know, just, I feel comfortable, comfortable in it, you know, step back going right was, is a favorite move of mine. Um, you know, I love getting into the paint and then, you know, kind of kind of stopping quick and trying to get those little three-point plays. Uh, any threes I can get going to my left hand and off the dribble, I feel really confident in. Um, that one's maybe a little lucky, but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I felt I just felt had a good sense of comfort and confidence this year. Will we see a dunk? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. You never say never. Um these legs aren't as young as they used to be, so I have to be feeling really good. Um, yeah, I would say it's low percentage at this point, but you never know. You, you never know. We, we've, <laughs> seen, we've seen a couple of different arenas here. What, what are some of your favorite away arenas that you've played at in the G League? What, what are some Ooh. cool environments you've seen? Yeah, no, I love going to Santa Cruz. When I was in L.A., playing in Santa Cruz was always really fun. Uh, they have a great environment, great crowd. Um, uh, playing playing in Austin's always fun. Austin's a great town. Um, we played there in the Western Conference Finals, and I guess it was 2016, uh, and they had a really good crowd, and um, and we won. So you know, it's always leaves a good taste in your mouth. Um, up here, uh, going to Wisconsin's always fun. Um, they always draw well. Any any place that draws well always makes the game more fun, and allows you to, you know, have a little bit more fun while you're, always, while you're out on the court. 
last season with uh, Lakeland making the uh, playoffs. What, what was that? What What are the G League playoffs like, and what is that experience like when you got to play in them? Man, it's a it's a like a two and a half week long sprint. You know, with the new format that they instituted of of one game elimination, um, you can't can't ease into any games. You got to be ready to go from the start. Um, that's why you know the timing of this thing was so crazy. Um, we had won six games in a row in Lakeland, and we were fe feeling really good about our team. Um, so, you know, we felt really confident going into whether it was on the road or at home uh, of any of anybody we were going to play against. We saw at, at the start of this uh, mix, we, we saw one of your buzzer beaters end up getting uh, Lakeland the win. Are you the type of person who, at the end of the game, with the shot on the line, wants to have the ball in your hands to make a play like that? And if so, what is your mentality when you have to go out there and know you got one shot to do it? Yeah, no, I, that's kind of, I, in my opinion, that's why you play the game, you know, that's why you put in the work in the summer and, and during the season is to be in that position and, and make the play. Um, I, I like having the ball in my hand, whether it's making the, making the right pass or, or taking the shot yourself, but I just, that's something I pride myself on is, you know, making the right decisions in, in games. We saw a couple of comments in there as, as you played the Red Claws, obviously, with uh, Taco being uh, Taco Fall being on the main Red Claws. What is your mentality when you have to go into the paint against a guy who is, you know, a seven-plus footer like that? Do you have to change anything about your drive? What are you trying to do there? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, a lot more uh, driving to pass rather than driving to finish at the rim for me. Um, you know, maybe those guys who can jump a little higher than me uh, try to finish over him, but uh, – yeah, either that or, or get to my floaters and get the ball up a lot quicker than you're than you're used to, just because you know the size is size is there and he's uh, he's coming for you. And back to the three pointers, we, we've seen quite a few deep three pointers from the, from the notch and and somewhat even the logo. How much have you seen guys' ranges extend since you started playing in the league, and how much further guys are shooting back now? Yeah, that's that's part of the game. You know, it's not just regular threes and just spotting up on the arc. It's you know four or five feet beyond the arc and um you know it's something that guys feel comfortable with it's, it's shots they practice during the summer and and in season is you know how deep can you go back and still feel like you're shooting your normal shot and still have that comfort level of, of when you're shooting perfect well josh that is the end of the highlight reel we have very much enjoyed doing this q a with you we've seen a lot of awesome fan comments uh, a lot of people have really enjoyed it really enjoyed your answers Really enjoyed hearing your story of how, which is really an incredible story, making it from Division Two to the G League to the NBA. It really is an awesome story. Josh, any closing comments before we uh, wrap this up for the fans? Uh, no, just appreciate, appreciate everybody uh, tuning in. Um, it was a great year. Um, loved being in Lakeland. Um, great year for the G League to continue growing. And you know, I just think it's going to keep getting better every season. 100%. All right, Josh. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we enjoyed you coming out and talking to the fans. Appreciate you guys. See you. See you.